Brian Parks from Belimo Technical Support. I'm here at Belimo headquarters in Danbury, Connecticut. Today, I've got Joe Carcare, who's the product manager for the Belimo Glow Valves, and today Joe is going to teach us how to rebuild a Belimo Glow Valve. Joe? Thank you, Brian. Like Brian said, today we're going to be looking at rebuilding this flange glow valve. What I have here in front of us is a G665C glow valve along with a ZG-GV16 rebuild kit. And this particular procedure will work for any Belimo glow valve. We just happen to be using these for demonstration purposes today. Um, to find out more information as far as what kits you would require for your valve, you could go to our website at www.belimo.us under the glow valve section and there'll be a listing for rebuild kits. So with that being said, we'll take a look at our parts that come in the kit. What we have here before you is the top mounting plate, a chamber, a plug, two gaskets, a packing nut, an end stop, three packing o-rings, a insertion and extraction tool, uh, a th little straw that protects the threading, some grease, and also Loctite number two gasket sealant, a new seat, and four new bolts. Along with that, we have our tools that we're going to use for today. We have a preset torque wrench and a ratchet and socket, both with three quarter inch sockets, a mallet, a screwdriver, some sort of a scraper or knife, a pipe wrench, adjustable wrench, a torch, safety glasses, and a seat extraction tool. Now even though there's not a tool per se that can be bought, this is one that we manufactured here in the machine shop. We just took a standard piece of three inch black pipe, which happened to be the same diameter of the seat, and we just cut out two little notches that pick up the seat. And again, I'll show you that later on in the video. With that being said, first thing we want to do is take our safety glasses. As a second step, we want to isolate this valve from flow, basically turning off any water or steam pressure that would be before and after the valve. After that, let it cool for some time in case it is hot before you approach the valve. From here, we can start taking it apart. One of our first steps is to remove these four bolts. We'll grab our three quarter inch ratchet and loosen them up accordingly. These bolts can be discarded because in the kit we have four new ones. As a next step, you're going to loosen up your packing nut. It's the brass nut up top. Once this is loose, you can take the valve stem and lift the whole assembly right out of the valve. And again, those pieces can be discarded. The next step is to remove the old gasket. Now, we're all the way down to the valve portion. This next step is what we need to remove the seat inside. We need to take out the old seat. So again, we're going to use our homemade tool and our torch. You're going to heat up the belly of the globe valve, alternating sides every few minutes. From there, take the extraction tool down inside the valve body and pick up those two notches and start to loosen it up using the pipe wrench. Now again, for the purposes of the video, it seems to be moving pretty freely, but again, when, if this were a real life situation, that seat might be fairly tight. If it seems to stick, again, reapply some heat to both sides of the valve. And then remove the valve seat. Once again, this tool we made, there isn't a tool per se. We took a piece of standard three inch black pipe that we had in our shop and we notched out two little notches there and it seemed to work pretty, pretty easily. There is another method with using a screwdriver and a mallet where you could slowly tap the seat, but this is not the preferred me method. 
After all, you don't want to damage the seat of your of the new the new seat that comes in the, the kit. Now remove the old seat. Now the next step before we rebuild is just to clean up and make sure everything on the valve is fairly clean. This may require a knife or a scraper to clear away the old gasket material. We also want to clean down inside the bottom of the valve where the old where the threads are and the old seal it was. Make sure everything's free from debris. And now we'll build it in reverse. Again, we take our new seat and we take some of the sealant, again, Loctite number two gasket sealant, and we're going to apply that to the threads and install accordingly. Just take note when threading not to cross thread the new seat. And once again, we take our tool, we pick up the notches. and tighten it up accordingly with the pipe wrench. Okay, from here, we're gonna put our new gasket material, again, some of the sealant, and put the gasket material down. From here, we have to put the plug in. We take some of the grease, and we're gonna apply grease to three spots on the plug the shaft, the O-ring all the way around, and also on the valve stem. And that'll go down into the pilot hole in the bottom of the valve. As the next step, you'll take your chamber and apply a thin layer of the gasket sealant and also a little bit of the lubricant inside the chamber and put that down. Your next step is to take the end stop Slide that down over the stem. Grab your second gasket and again apply a thin layer of sealant and put that on top. And then take your top plate, once again some sealant, and the top mounting flange down over the valve. Now it's important to note before you close this up that we have two gaskets, one below the chamber and one above the chamber. From here, put in your new bolts. And then torque the bolts. This is what the torque wrench comes in, again, preset to 20 Newton meters. And you want to tighten this down in a star formation or crisscross. Our last step is to put the new packing and packing nut in. When we install the packing, we take our new packing O-rings and this thread straw and we slide it into the back end of the O-ring. And as you can see, the O-ring has a large opening and a small opening. We're going to put the straw through the large opening and coincidentally, the small opening has some paint on the top. This is going to go side down. Now it is important to note the straw should be all the way down clearing the valve threads. This way the packing doesn't get scored on its way down. We're also going to take our insertion tool on the back end and tap the O-rings down and then repeat the procedure. Again, straw through the back end with the paint side down. We take our white insertion tool and again tap the, the next O-ring down. Now on the last O-ring, as we put the straw in, we want it to be face up. This is also very important. The first two O-rings were down, the last one is face up. So that's two down and one up. And again, we take the insertion tool and tap him down all the way. From here, we take the packing nut. Once the packing nut has been put in hand tight, take your adjustable wrench 
tighten that up until it bottoms out. As one last test, take your valve stem and slide it up and down, just making sure it feels smooth and free of any hangups. So now this valve has been rebuilt. One of our last steps now is to be to reapply water pressure or steam pressure. As the valve's flowing, we're going to take some note of any leaks. And as your final step, reapply the actuator and linkage, power it up and hit adaption. And once again, let it travel a few times, taking just a quick visual looking for leaks, either from this section or from the packing. Okay, Joe, thank you very much. Uh, if you have any questions about anything that you've seen today, please call Belimo Technical Support at 1-800-543-9038. Or you could also go to www.belimo.us and you'll find this information on the Belimo website under the Global Valve section. Joe, thanks for great training today. Thank you. It's very informational. Thank you.